So let's talk about blood typing. You see, your blood isn't just this red goo. It's packed with personality. And everybody has a very unique blood ID card made up of two big systems. You have your ABO system and your RH system. You can think of these as your blood's first and last name. So at the heart of everything, there's these tiny little name tags on your red blood cells known as glycoprotein. Proteins. They're part sugar and part protein. Depending on which glycoproteins you have, your immune system decides who's a friend and who would be an invader. So imagine this. Your immune system is like airport security at a super high tech terminal. Every red blood cell has to show its ID badge. Those are those glycoproteins also known as your blood's antigens. If security scans that badge and it does not meet the approved list, uh-oh, the alarms start going off and backup is called in. This is when you enter your IgM antibodies. They don't just grab one cell enemy. No, they have a full chain reaction. They start clinging to multiple red blood cells at once. This leads to agglutination, also known as clumping of those red blood cells. And that clumping is going to cause major traffic jams inside your blood vessels. These IgM antibodies are also going to activate something known as the complement system. And this system is made up of these really neat special forces squads of proteins. They're going to form a membrane attack complex. They're going to start punching holes into that donor red blood cells membranes, ultimately to do one thing and one thing only. It's going to cause those red blood cells to start to burst, hopefully preventing any kind of incompatibility errors from occurring. So like we said before, there are going to be two main tags that your body is going to be looking at in order to verify if it's you or not. First, we have our ABO system. In this system, we have type A antigens or glycoproteins, type B antigens or glycoproteins, and depending on which tag or combination you have, your blood type is gonna fall into one of four groups. Type A blood type is going to only have type A glycoproteins. Type B is only gonna have type B B glycoproteins. Type AB is going to have both A and B glycoproteins. And type O ultimately is going to have none. They're going to have neither A nor B. They're just kind of this plain tag-free red blood cell. Because your body always has mechanisms to protect itself, it's going to create antibodies against the glycoproteins that you don't have. So let's see how this plays out. As we discussed, type A is going to have A antibodies antigens or glycoproteins. So that means that we don't want anything besides A. What is the other blood type we have? We have B. So they're going to create anti-B antibodies to keep that B away. Same thing goes for type B blood type. If we have B antigens or glycoproteins, we don't want any A near us whatsoever. So they've created anti-A antibodies to prevent any foreign invaders. Now here's where we get a little fancy, right? When we have type AB blood types, because we have both A and B antigens or glycoproteins, we don't need to create any antibodies to protect ourselves against. So here's a fun fact. Because AB blood types don't make antibodies against A or B, that means that they can accept either A, B, AB, or O blood types. So that makes AB people universal receivers. Now the opposite happens with type O. So because type O blood types don't have any glycoproteins or antigens on their surface, that means that they're going to have both anti-A and anti-B to protect themselves. So what's great about type O blood types is because they don't have any of those glycoproteins, they basically can donate to anyone and everyone because there's 
not going to be any kind of ABO immune radar in place since it doesn't have any glycoproteins on its surface. The next blood group system we have is our RH system. This is named after something called the rhesus monkey because that's where scientists first discovered the RH protein. So here's how it works. If you have the RH protein on your red blood cells, that means that you are RH positive. In contrast, if you are missing that RH protein, then that would make you RH negative. There's no in-betweens when it comes to RH factor. You're either positive or you're negative. So let's say we're trying to give somebody a transfusion. If someone is RH positive, then that means that they can receive blood from RH positive and RH negative donors. Why is that? Because they don't make antibodies against RH. Their body sees this protein and goes, yep, we're good to go, no big deal. But for somebody who has maybe RH negative, this is gonna be a completely different story. Their immune system is like, whoa, what is this RH stuff? I've never seen this before. And if for some reason they get that RH positive blood, their immune system might treat it like an invader, leading to this massive hemolytic transfusion reactor. So it's really important that we give the correct blood to the correct patient. But here's the twist. The RH system is different from our ABO system because RH antibodies aren't naturally present in RH negative people. That means that if the first time somebody who is RH negative receives RH positive blood, they may not necessarily see a reaction, but their immune system starts to learn and they're going to build memory. It creates this anti-RH antibodies. So the next time that that RH positive blood is given to them, boom, the immune system is going to start attacking. This is honestly why we try to avoid giving RH positive blood to RH negative patients, even if it's their first transfusion. We want to avoid that antibody buildup for future safety. So before anybody gets blood transfusions, we always make sure that we have the perfect match. We don't want to go through this process and potentially harm a patient. So we always do something called blood typing and cross matching. So here's how it works. We use these special serums that contain known antibodies. So anti-serum A is going to have antibodies against A antigens. Anti-serum B is going to have antibodies against B antigens. And the third test is often anti-D, which is actually we're testing for the RH system. These serums are often going to be mixed with a sample of that person's red blood cells to see if we have a reaction. If agglutination occurs, known as clumping like we see here, then that means that we have a matching antigen. That means that with this antigen is specifically present on our red blood cells. So here's how it works. If we were to add anti-A and anti-B to these two samples and nothing starts to clump like we see here, then that means that that particular blood doesn't have anti-A or anti-B, which means we're most likely looking at an O person. So they have the O ABO blood type. Now, if we see agglutination in our anti-D, then that means that person is positive because they have that RH protein factor. Now, as we see with A types, in anti-A, you're gonna to start to see agglutination take place. So because that clumping is happening, that means that these two individuals have the A blood type. However, this individual is positive because they have the anti-D clumping as well, and this one would be A negative because they don't. Next up, looking at our B types, you can see here when we give anti-A and anti-B, we've got that clumping taking place with our anti-B, meaning that we have a B person. They have the B ABO blood type. The first person would be A positive because they have clumping in the anti-D, and the second person would be A, I'm sorry, B negative because they don't have that clumping with anti-D. And then last up, we have our A, B individuals. They're gonna have clumping take place in both A and B, which makes sense because they're an AB blood type. And then this individual on the top is AB positive because of the clumping with the anti-D RH factor. And then of course the last person would be AB negative because they have no clumping with that factor. Okay. So let's say that we have typed the donor and the recipient's blood 
great. But just to be extra safe, we also run a test called cross matching. So here's what happens. The lab is going to receive the recipient's serum, which contains that recipient's antibodies. And what they're going to do is they're going to mix some of that serum with the donor's red blood cells. Then we watch to see what happens. If we have a glutenation or clumping take place, uh, uh oh, we do not want to give this blood. We can't use it because that means that the recipient has antibodies that would attack the donor's blood. However, on the opposite end, if we have somebody who doesn't have any agglutination or clumping take place, then that means that the donor's blood is safe for the recipient. This step is super important because sometimes rare glycoproteins or even minor blood group antigens not tested in the basic ABO or RH factor can still cause a reaction. So by cross-matching, this is going to help us catch those little sneak attacks that could potentially happen. So now let's test our knowledge on everything we learned about blood groups with some practice questions. And that's it, besties. If you found this video helpful, make sure you check out some of our other cardiovascular videos. As always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye.